Okay, today we're going to be taking websites and turning them into web apps. Why am I doing a tutorial on this? Because I recently watched a video on YouTube where somebody was doing this using a program called Natifier, I think, um, which is fine. Maybe that program has some features, but to do this, you don't need a special application. In fact, you just need to create a text file. But let's go ahead and look at a few options here on how to do this and uh, what it re will result in. Uh, also, normally I use i3 Window Manager. Today, I just quickly, a few minutes ago, installed XFCE because I think floating windows will display this a little bit better. So I don't really have my desktop set up and none of my keyboard shortcuts work up and my terminal doesn't even have um, borders on it because I usually do them full screen. Uh, so just bear with me if I fumble around a little bit. Anyway, here on my desktop, I can right click and I can say, create URL link, great. I can type in a name, I can type in films by, Chris. I can give it a comment if I want, but I'll give it a URL, HTTPS filmsbychris.com, and we can give it an icon from a list of icons that are already installed on my system, or if I have a PNG or something on my desk, uh, on my computer somewhere, I can choose that. I'll just grab a trophy here, because yay, award-winning website, maybe, I don't know, never won any awards. Anyway, create, and there we go, we have an icon on the desktop that says Films by Chris, but when I click on it, it doesn't really open like an app, right? It's going to open up whatever my default web browser is with the full address bar and tabs and everything. And that's not what we want. We want it to look like a native application. So how can we do this? Well, I use Brave Browser. Feel free to comment below on why I shouldn't be using Brave Browser and what browser I should be using because everyone has an opinion and they want to voice it. So go ahead and do that below while I continue the tutorial. What I'm going to show you here uh, will work with basically any uh, Chromium-based browser. Chromium, Chrome, as far as I know, Chromium, Chrome, uh, Edge Browser, I'm assuming, Brave. Let's go ahead and have a look. So uh, on my system, Brave Browser is called Brave Browser, and then I can give it a URL like HTTPS filmsbychris.com and if I run that it's going to do basically what happened last time right we don't want that we can close this close all what I can do is instead of just giving the URL I'm going to go dash dash app equals and the URL now it opens it up like a native application we don't have the address bar and you know all my buttons work and it's just running using brave so it's all the javascript and everything should work i can go about i can go software i can go support i can click my little button here and it scrolls back up uh, i do still have an issue because i have it where certain tabs open up in a new uh or certain links open up in a new tab or window and they will still open up in a separate window but that's just how my website's designed not necessarily what we're doing here uh, so that's great. We can do that. Uh, so how do we go about sharing that and other options like that? So first of all, let's go. I'm in my desktop folder here. If I list out, I've got one folder here. It's a, it, or one file. It's called a desktop file. And this is how Linux creates links, uh, you know, your icons and stuff on your desktop. And you can, you, most file browsers, you can go into and see these and click on them and it will run the applications or whatever you have it set up to. And unlike other operating systems, it's not just a binary blob. It's a plain, easy to use text file that can actually have a lot of features in it. But let's go ahead and just vim into this file right now and see what it looks like. It's a desktop entry, version one. This particular type is a link Name, films like Chris, you can have a comment. I think that's for when you're hovering over it. I Maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure. Icon, again, I'm using a one that's built into the system or installed on my system, so I can just give the name of it. Otherwise, I can get a full path to an image. And then the URL. So how do we change this to be like the application? Well, uh, there's actually a few options. Uh, and I'll go into another one if I don't forget by the end of the video. But right now, let's go ahead and change this type to, whoops application and then down here instead of url i'm going to say exec and hopefully i type everything right brave dash browser dash dash app equals and this url here and if i did everything right this is updated i can click it and it now opens up just like we wanted before so that's great we manually created that let's see if i was to go into my projects folder i actually have a script in here let me just run it it's called fb fbk films by chris uh app i run that and it creates an icon on my desktop that i can click that will open up in brave browser as an application here so 
Uh, let's see what my script does. It's actually very, very simple. So FBK, uh, I could have used a, uh, an icon installed on a system. Uh, basically, I create variables here for the name that I want it to display, where I want it to be. And this is just so I can change out this script quickly for other applications if I want. Uh, I have where I want the icon to go. I'm just hiding it as a hidden image in my home folder. I'm going to display installing wherever the app name is to desktop. And then here I am downloading the icon that I want to be shown on the desktop. Uh, if I didn't want to download it, I could always, you know, again, use a system, uh, an image that's on the system, an icon from the themes that we have. But uh, I could also, uh, I could also have converted this image to a base 64 variable and then decoded that which is fine, just would have made this script look a lot, be a lot bigger and look a lot bigger. Uh, and then right here, I just echo out all that information for the desktop file. And then I'm pretty sure you have to make it executable. Otherwise, when you click on it on the desktop, it'll ask, do you want to execute this? Uh, so that's it. So let's go ahead and, and change this. Uh, I'll just make it go to my scripts folder. I'll save that. By default, the script is designed to just override the uh, last one, so I can do an update. Boom, it's now updated. I can click that, and now instead of going to my home page, it goes to my scripts directory. Great. So what's another option? If you um, didn't want to write out a script, how can you generate one of these without going in and editing the file? Well, if you're in a Chrome-based browser, a Chromium-based browser, uh, whether it be again, Brave, Chromium, Chrome, uh, and you're at a page, you can go down here on the menu and you can choose, where is it, more tools? And then over here, we can create a shortcut. And when you create a shortcut, it asks for the name, but then here you have a button here, a little checkbox here, you can say, open as window. If you do that, it's going to open up similar to a native app. Now, uh, it does give you a few more things up here. It shows you the plugin, so it's a little different in the way it displays, but it's still similar to what we had before. Uh, the, in my opinion, the biggest drawback to this is if we go, and it should have grabbed the default icon, the fav icon. I don't know why it didn't at that point. Um, if I kill that, if I go back into my um, desktop directory and I edit, well, let's list out the files here. Oops list out the files. You'll see one here that says Brave and blah, 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 default desktop. And I can cut that out and you can see it's a desktop file. Uh, it adds an open XDG link at the top. So it actually can run like a script or a desktop file, which is interesting, I guess, or I don't know. I don't know why that's at the top there, but you'll notice it has my URL in there nowhere. And that's something that I hate about modern uh, web browsers uh, on desktop and especially on mobile, uh, because if you want to add a link to your to a web page on your mobile device, you kind of have to do it this way. And what it's doing here is it's saying use your Brave browser and look for an app ID of this long string here, right? Which is configured inside your particular browser. So if I sent this to somebody else, it's not going to work for them. It's it's because it's looking basically in, in the database for my on my system for that. And it's it's super annoying. Uh, I have had myself and I know many people on their phones will create links using. I've done it with Brave browser. I've done it with uh, Chrome browser uh, where you create links to websites. And then when you do a system update, they all disappear because they're all linked or uh, on the Windows machine I have at work. The, the IT guys create a whole bunch of links to stuff on the um on, on our desktops, none of them work anymore. They created them a couple of years ago. The uh, browsers have been updated, and at some point that information has been lost. And instead of just having the URLs in there, they have these stupid long IDs, and it tries to run them that way uh, instead of just putting the URL in there. So we have like 10 icons on our desktops on all the machines at work that those links don't work anymore. You click them, they open Brave Browser, but they don't go to any URL they're supposed to. They just go to the home screen. So I don't really advise this uh, if you're going to be, obviously, if you're going to be um, trying to share this file with other people because it's not going to work for them. But I guess if you're just trying to create a link for yourself that's going to open up like that, uh, that's a quick way to do it. Uh, I, I highly recommend just making your own file, much like my... Uh, FBK desktop file here. Let's clear the screen and run that again. Again, it's just a couple of lines 
And uh, it's super simple. And no matter what machine, as long as they have Brave Browser, of course, if they don't have Brave Browser, they, you're going to have to put them whatever browser they have. That's the biggest drawback. But in the install script, you can have it check for what browsers they have and apply it to that. Again, uh, all Chromium-based browsers that I know of uh, allow this app option. I quickly tried it with Firefox before recording this. The app option like this does not work. Uh, but I'm sure it probably has functionality like this. I, I, I know browsers used to have a kiosk option, which was kind of like this, but would make everything full screen. Um, so I'm sure Firefox has something similar. So you could write in your script, check for Firefox, check for Brave Browser, check for Chromium, check for Chrome. Or you can check whatever the default browser is and from that list uh, go accordingly. Uh, you can also set it to open up with the default browser, and as long as it's Chromium-based, this should work, uh, which probably would be a shorter way of doing it, but then if they're using Firefox, it's not going to work. So there are drawbacks to this. Um, and then, of course, you can always have your script install the dependency browser that you want. Anyway, this is not something I do normally, but I, like I said, I saw a YouTube video on someone using third-party applications to create something like this, which was looked a lot more complicated, like it created all these files and folders uh, from what I saw in the video, where all you need is a text file like this. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to get out of XFC here and get rid of these floating windows I can't stand to my tiling window manager of i3, and I'm going to have a great day. So I hope you have a great day. Patreon.com forward slash MailX1000, as well as other links in the description if you want to support me. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.